there's a very important method in physics that is called method of scaling. So from that method, we can solve many complicated questions in a very simple manner. So I have taken two sample questions from Pathfinder. One is from rotational motion, check your understanding question 10. Another is from leptostatics, check your understanding again, question number 10. So from these two questions, we'll understand this method. And there are many more questions in book Pathfinder and many other places based on this method, right? So most of the questions which are based on this method are very good questions. And all of those questions can come in J Advance and Olympiad exams. So let us start with the first question. This is, uh, I have taken rotational motion, question number 10 first. So there's a uniform right angle triangular lamina. This is uniform right angle lamina. It is placed on a horizontal surface. Surface is not frictionless. You have friction on the surface. One of the acute angle of the lamina is theta. You can see this angle is theta. And then this is top view. FA and FE are the minimum forces required to rotate the lamina about a stationary vertical axis passes through vertices A and B. So about A, when you fix this A and there's a vertical axis, when you want to rotate uh, this lamina about this, then minimum force which is required is FA. And the same thing when you do about B, then minimum force required is FB. Fine, then what we have to find out, we have to find out the minimum force required to rotate the lamina about the stationary vertical axis passing through vertex C. Right. So let us see from the method of scaling, how can we sol solve this question in very simple, straightforward and very, very, very few steps. So first I suppose the about axis, let us fix this A, right? About this axis, we are trying to rotate the lamina. So this much we can understand very easily. If you have to rotate this, then we have to overcome friction force. So there is torque of friction we have to overcome. So let us say now, to rotate about A, the torque of friction is tau A, about A when you're rotating. So that tau A, I'm not actually calculating. That is what method of scaling is. I'm assuming that it is uh, equal to some constant A, A is some constant, that mu also is included in this, and mass of the lamina, G, mu and G. And then I have taken some length L, right? One length L, which is hypotenuse in this case. So this A contains information in the sine theta, cos theta, and the coefficient of friction, all those things will be there. Right. So I don't need to calculate this A, still I can still find out the answer, so find out the torque about C. That is what the point is. So about B now, torque of B, I have assumed another constant here with same M, mass remains M only, G is G, and hypotenuse for this is L. This is another constant, this might be a combination of some other functions, sine theta, cos theta, and some other constants. Now, when I calculate the torque based on these two, in the terms of tau A and tau B, if I want to calculate torque when you are uh, trying to rotate this lamina about C, then let us see what happens. So when you are doing it about C, see this diagram here, I am going to divide this into two, again, right angle triangle lamina. So I'm dropping one perpendicular. So this is, you can, I've given this uh, point as name D. So you can see BDC is also a similar triangle, right? And a similar right angle triangle. ADC is also a similar right angle triangle, right? So for this now, if you want to rotate about C, then it is like rotating. Uh, it is uh, like overcoming the torque of BDC, friction acting on BDC part and torque acting on ADC part. So these two torque I have to add, fine. Now see here, <clears throat> this is the important point. Point For this thing now, BDC, for BDC, C is the point about which I'm rotating and this angle is theta. So when this angle was theta and about A, how much torque I have assumed? A, some constant A and mass M, G and L. L is hypotenuse. A, so A remains constant because it is the similar thing, right? So A remains A only, then Mass will change, of course, mass of this is less. So mass of this will come out to be m sine square theta that I am not explaining, that I am leaving for you to calculate. You can very easily calculate just by taking mass per unit area and then area of this bigger triangle and this is smaller triangle. It will come out to be m sine square theta. So what happens? A remains A only. M becomes m sine square theta. G remains G only. L. L was hypotenuse. Here, what is hypotenuse? This is the L sine theta. So this becomes L sine theta. Fine. Now, after that, tau 2, so this is for ADC, 
for ADC now about this point, see about this point now it is like about B. So about B, what constant I have assumed? B only. So B mass of that will be M cos square theta. And then G remains G, hypotenuse for this is L cos theta. This is the hypotenuse L cos theta. So tau C I have found in terms of tau A and tau B, sine cube theta plus cos cube theta, right? So let us know, but we have to find out the minimum force required. So one more small argument and we are done. So when you have to rotate the lamina about axis A, then torque we have calculated. Torque was some A M G L. That is what I have assumed. That expression we already have. Now, how do we find the minimum force required? So if torque is fixed, some torque is required and you want to find the minimum force, that means what you have to do? You can then increase the length as maximum as possible. So you have to apply the force at the maximum possible distance, which is point B. You won't find any other distance, any other point on the lamina, which has more distance from A than B, right? So that is why at A, let us say that force is FA and length is L. So tau A is FAL, same argument tau B is, then you apply when you are rotating, trying to rotate about B, then you will have to apply the force at farthest point, maximum possible distance point. So FB into that is also L. So tau A and tau B is equal to FA into L, FB into L. So that is what now I'm going to substitute here in tau C. So what do you get now? See. So there are two cases in the book. Answer only one case is given. So I'll explain you how two cases are possible. Now tau C, uh, I will explain this. First let us, uh, let me write tau A and tau B values. After that, now this lamina is actually rotating about C. So in this, there are two cases possible. Based on the angle of value of angle theta, this distance might be more or this distance might also be more. This is L cos theta. So if theta is between zero and 45, then definitely this distance will be more. So if this distance is more, you're going to apply force here, then only you're going to get minimum force. So that is what I have done. If theta is between zero and 45, AC is going to be greater than AB. So FC into L cos theta. So you get then L cos theta, L will cancel, you can see. And then you get this as the answer, right? This answer is given in the book for this case. Now, for another case, one more answer is possible. Theta is greater than 45, less than 90. In that case, this distance will be more. So if this distance is more, we are going to apply force here. Because remember, what is the condition? We want to find out the minimum force. Torque is fixed. So length you increase, arm length you increase, force becomes minimum. In that case, this becomes L sine theta and this is going to be the answer, right? So that's it. This is, it is actually, I have to write so many steps just so that I can explain it in a better way. But if you see, it is a very uh, small question if we apply the, if you, if you solve from scaling method. So one more example I have taken to explain this method. Now this question you can try before seeing the solution. Uniformly charged right angle, this is from electrostatics. Similar question, even question numbers are also same. Check your understanding question 10, both. This is also based on the same concept. So there is a uniformly charged right angle triangular lamina ABC and acute angle of the vertex is theta. Potential at A and B are V and VB. So here and here potential is given. We have to find out potential of the vertex at C. So this question you can do from integration also. You can in fact try to solve this question with the help of, with actually, by actually calculating VA, calculating VB, you can calculate VA and VB in this, right, from integration, but that is not needed. Here I'm going to explain the solution from a scaling method. Okay, so let us see now. Here for this ABC triangle, potential at A, I have assumed some K1, some constant K1, charge and divided by L, fine. Dimensionally Q by L, it will be proportional to the charge and it will be proportional to this side or any side, right? So I have taken the uh, hypotenuse and then this, whatever extra is coming, sine theta, cos theta or whatever is coming, that will be in K1. So that is when if this is A, right? And then this angle is theta. Then I have assumed V as K1. Likewise, VB will be K2 because this is, this B is the another vertex where angle theta is given. 
Again, Q total charge remains same and hypotenuse is still L, right? If you see, I'm doing the exactly same thing which I've done in the previous question. So that is what you have to do in scaling questions. If you understand once you apply the same question across the different, different chapters, you apply the same thing in every question of all other chapters and you get the answer in very small, very few steps. <coughs> Sorry. So VA is this, VB is this. Now we have to find out, let's see, same thing, right? exactly same thing, what I did before. I'm going to drop one perpendicular here. So let me mark this, this angle is 90 degree. And potential at this will be potential due to this triangle and potential due to this triangle, right? Now the fact that this triangle is also a right angle triangle. So here potential due to ADC, ADC will be what? So C point, ADC, which formula I have to use? Think K2 Q by L or K1 Q by L, K2 Q by L, right? Because the point which is away the, from angle theta, for that I have assumed constant as k2, right? So don't make this mistake here. It is not k1, it is k2. This point is the point which is away from angle theta. So k2, now what will be the charge of this? q cos square theta. And then what is hypotenuse for this? L cos theta. Same way now, due to this, it will be k1, this formula and charges Q sine square theta. And then this hypotenuse is L sine theta. And that is how you get VC is equal to, this now I have substituted KQ, K2 Q by L, you can see as VB and here VA. So you get VB cos theta plus VA sine theta, right? Try to do this by actual integration method. Also, you will learn some new thing, fine. So that's it, that was my analysis. If you have liked my analysis, please give a like to this video. And please subscribe to this channel also. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching. Thanks for your time. And we'll meet again. All the best.